Starling continues to iterate and improve its design. It'll soon be offering a mini, no, not this toy that I have here, but an actual Starlink mini that will be light enough and small enough to fit in your backpack. It'll be less than four pounds with all of the equipment needed, and it will be about the size of an iPad. But while this is going on, the US government has wasted billions of dollars on a rural high-speed internet plan that has gone nowhere and is completely blocked by red tape. So a good question might be, why are they not using Starlink? Well, I touched on that in an interview a few months ago with Brendan Carr, one of the FCC commissioners. He says that the U.S. government is very anti-SpaceX and Starlink, and here's some of that interview. The federal government itself is relying on Starlink when connectivity matters the most. You know, uh, our military is entering into multi-million dollar contracts. So this idea that the FCC says, eh, this is kind of a, you know, not a, 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 a not reliable technology. But then on the other hand, you see what the federal government's doing with putting its own money there when connectivity matters. It just doesn't make sense. And I think another way to think about this is I sort of describe the Biden administration as having a need hate relationship with Elon Musk. On the one hand, the government needs Elon Musk and his technologies to deliver on a lot of their policy priorities, like outer space, right? Like you need uh, uh, you need <clears throat> SpaceX uh, to deliver on a lot of NASA's goals. You need uh, Elon Musk technologies for a lot of the electronic vehicle, EV goals that the administration has. And so where there's no other technology available, you do see the government relying on Elon Musk's technology. Apparently not a single home has been connected three years after enactment, and this was reported by the Washington Times. Biden's $42.5 billion rural high-speed internet plan has been stuck in red tape, and this was the same plan that Starlink lost out on a major contract, $886 million in rural broadband subsidies. The FCC gave that denial because they claimed Starlink hasn't proven it can deliver the promised service of rural broadband, which is just absolutely ridiculous. The good news for you is that if you're looking for reliable internet in rural areas, Starlink is a great option. In fact, they're even being carried by Walmart now, which is just insane to me because I started covering Starlink in the better than nothing beta days when it was very new. A lot of people wanted it, but not a lot of people had access to it. It was still rolling out. And so pretty soon here, we should have the mini Starlink again. This is a toy. This is actually a toy that was made by SpaceX. I don't know if they sell it anywhere, but you can see right there. It says it is a Starlink toy. But with that being said, we should have the Starlink Mini being rolled out for testing pretty soon here in limited access, which I mean, it would be great if I could like test one cause you know, I'm like the Starlink girl. At first when I saw images released of the new Starlink Mini, it wasn't by Elon Musk. So I was a little bit worried that it was just someone trying to get clicks, but Elon commented on it. And then we found out that Starlink quietly released the specs on their website. So here's what we know about the Starlink Mini dish. According to Elon Musk, the new dish will take five minutes to set up. And like I said, it can be carried in your backpack. SpaceX recently updated its app and this came with some official images of the new Starlink Mini. This will start rolling out to select areas apparently as soon as next month, maybe July. So again, my new quest is to try and get my hands on one. <laughs> and as you guys may know, Starlink provides satellite-based internet connectivity, often to underserved areas or areas where it's just really hard to get service, namely Starbase in South Texas. That is the only reason that I'm really able to do live streams from down there. So I know how beneficial Starlink is and- 10, 9, ignition sequence starts. working on getting back in shape and part of that is working out maybe to launch countdowns. The other part is getting your protein in. That all starts in the kitchen, which is why I love Magic Spoon cereal. Magic Spoon has the great taste of cereal that you love with more protein and less sugar. And I'm actually gonna try the strawberry milkshake flavor for the first time. This is one of their new flavors, but my ultimate favorite is the fruity flavor. One serving of this has 12 grams of protein. Magic Spoon is also great for a low carb lifestyle with four to five net gram carbs per serving. If you don't know where to start, you can order the variety pack, which comes in four delicious flavors, fruity, frosted, cocoa, and peanut butter. That is actually 
really good. Magic Spoon fits a variety of lifestyles. It's high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, and naturally flavored. And Magic Spoon is cereal reinvented. It's the same great taste that you remember, but upgraded with grown up ingredients with no artificial flavors or dyes. And as someone who's watching my sugar intake, or at least trying to, it can be hard to find exciting and delicious options. That's where Magic Spoon comes in. Use my code Ellie to get $5 off this delicious high protein Magic Spoon cereal by clicking the link in the description. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen and use the code Ellie for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash Ellie to save $5 today. The downside is, you know, you have to have the right power source. It is still a bit cumbersome to set it up. So I think that the Starlink Mini will just be, I hate the word game changer, it's overused, but I really think that it will be uh, just insane how many use cases we'll have for a Starlink Mini compared to what we have now, which again, it's already um, decreased in size and become much easier to move around over the past few years. And of course, as I was right about to export this video, I see a breaking news post from Sawyer Merritt. SpaceX has apparently officially started selling the Starlink Mini, but this is only for early Starlink customers who are being invited to purchase the Starlink Mini kit for $599 and bundle the Mini Roam service with their existing residential service plan for an additional $30 a month. Here's some of the specs. It's 63% lighter than the standard Starlink dish. It has a built-in Wi-Fi router, lower power consumption, a DC power input, and max download speeds over 100 megabits per second. Fits in your backpack, only a little bigger than a piece of paper. Deliveries start in July. The operating temp is negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which... Hopefully it's able to survive Texas heat. It gets pretty hot here. The mini roam service is an additional $30 per month for 50 gigabytes of mobile data that can be used anywhere in the United States. $1 per gigabyte for additional data. SpaceX also said in their invite email, our goal is to reduce the price of Starlink, especially for those around the world where connectivity has been unaffordable or completely unavailable. But in regions with high usage where Starlink mini places additional demand on the satellite network, we are offering a limited number of the Starlink mini kits to start for $5.99. Now the new images were posted on X by a Ukrainian engineer, Oleg Kutkov, and he also had some internal images from the Mini's recent certification by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. According to that certification, the Starlink Mini houses a built-in router that will support 2.4 and five gigahertz bands, along with an ethernet port for those who want to connect directly. In a follow-up post, Elon showed 100 megabit per second download speeds, 11.5 megabit per second upload speeds, and a latency of 23 milliseconds. So the Starlink Mini will probably be slower and pull slower speeds than what my Starlink is capable of, but keep in mind that with 100 megabits per second, that's more than enough for multiple 4K video streams, video calls, voice chats, and file downloads. You might even be able to do some online gaming, but again, I need to get one so I can test it out. <laughs> so how small is it really? The Starlink Mini measures 11.4 by 9.8 inches, which is roughly the size of a 13-inch Apple MacBook Pro. And the kickstand on the Mini also comes on the regular dish, although the regular dish is meant for roof mounting, whereas the Mini seems to be intended for travel use. The good news too, it's gonna be cheaper. The Mini will cost about half of what the full-sized version does. The full version costs about $500, although new subscribers can get a discounted rate of $300. So the Mini will probably be around $250 retail and about $150 for new customers, which will again open up new doors for people that wouldn't be able to afford for the current version of Starlink. Back to the question of why is our government not relying on Starlink to help people in rural and underserved areas? Well, Brendan Carr, who I interviewed, just went on Fox News to talk about the fact that the Biden administration's high-speed internet program from 2021 has not connected anyone. So 2021 is when I started covering Starlink in the Better Than Nothing beta days. And in all that time, Look at Starlink in over a hundred countries with millions of people using the service and yet this high-speed internet program that costs $42 billion um, hasn't connected anyone. Apparently, Brendan gives an update that no construction projects will even start until 2025 at the earliest. 
And Carr says that while some high-speed internet projects have connected people during the Biden administration, none of them have been funded by the $42.5 billion allocation from the Broadband Equity Access and Deployment, or BEAD, program from the Infrastructure and Jobs Act, which is the administration's signature broadband initiative. And keep in mind, in 2022, the FCC revoked the $800 million awarded to Elon Musk's Starlink under the Trump administration, which... Car thinks would have brought that high-speed internet service to 642,000 rural locations. So what do you guys think in the comments? Do you think that this is favoring government-run networks and unnecessarily hindering people in rural populations from getting access to the internet? Also, would you be interested yourself in having a Starlink Mini? As you probably noticed, I really want one to test one out. I think that it would be very interesting to see how it compares to my current Starlink. And this is something that you know I reported on over a year ago before I broke my leg actually because I had some super secret intel that they were working on this and so it appears that yes they've had some delays but now it's being made public that they will have a Starlink mini and I would open this but I don't know maybe this will be worth something someday I actually think it's really cute it's they're labeling it an action figure but yeah the Starlink mini should make a huge difference and I also wonder and I don't know the timing of this but we know that Amazon is also working on its own version of Starlink the Project Kuiper, and in the images that they've rendered and showed off, they do sort of have a mini version. So maybe Starlink is trying to get ahead of the game and releasing this. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Project Kuiper, but hopefully I can get some insight on that soon. So thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate all of the support for Ellie in Space, and I'll see you in the next one.